Good afternoon and welcome to the Forge TV Student Union Candidate Debates. Today is our chance to question some of the candidates. Uh, you can also get involved via Facebook or Twitter. The hashtag is SUVote to get in touch with us. Now today we're going to be doing sport, women's activities and the president. So all the candidates are going to get a good questioning this afternoon. Uh, we're going to start with sport. Uh, we'll go around and introduce everyone here today. So first of all, we've got Dhruv Gandhi, uh, Emily Dibble, Jess Braddock, uh, Ryan Jim and Jamie Arkell. OK, so there are five sports officers, well, candidates. Uh, the first question, I'm just going to go around and just get you to all introduce yourselves and say why you want to go for this role. So we'll start with you, Dhruv, and go around this way. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dhruv Gandhi. Uh, I want to go for sports because I... Um I developed the Society's Cup in intramural, well I helped to that develop with intramural the Society's Cup to get people involved and to get more of a house cup sort of vibe so people work for their societies um, and, and basically I want to improve on that. As well as that I want people to get more involved um, through access sport and know that access sport is there for them to get involved even if it is uncomp uncompetitively. uncompetitively um, just so that they can, they have a feel that they don't have to be good at the sport and still play it. Um, so basically, I just want to raise awareness of what sport is available to students. Okay, thank you, Emily. Um, I'm Emily Dibble, and I'm also running for sports officer. Um, I've been involved in sport ever since Freshers' Week of first year. Went along to cricket, give it a go, and been hooked ever since. I think sport is a great part of anybody's uni experience, and I want to help share that. Um, ever since Ben Baldwin came to our coaching session and went, hey, I'm going for sports officer, I went, hey, I want that job when I graduate. Um, I've spent the last year on sports committee and by working behind the scenes, I've seen that sports officer does make a real difference. It's a really important role and I feel I've got a lot to offer to it. Okay. Uh, Jess? Hi guys, I'm Jess. Um, in my first year at university, I was actually injured, so I didn't play any sports at all. Um, and when it got to Christmas and I was able to get involved, I just didn't know what was there. I really, really wanted to become involved and wasn't aware of Access Sport or the intramural scheme. Um, so I've gone basically from in my first year being completely uninvolved to now in my fourth year, I'm club captain of hockey, one of the biggest sports clubs in the university. So I've played, I've done Access Sport, I've played intramural and now I'm playing club sport. I feel like I've gone through every level and have noticed improvements that could be made in every level of uh, sport at the university. Right. Okay, uh, I'm Ryan Jin, and uh, and yeah, I really like to be a sports officer because uh, I've I've been here for a very long time. It's my fifth year now, and uh, ever since uh, I I decided to come over, uh, I, I knew I wanted to be involved in sports because it's something that I've done all my life. And coming from Canada, it it was particularly difficult to kind of adapt. But one of the things I found that helped me adapt the most was getting involved in sports. And I feel like that's a critical part of, of getting involved, uh, is to give back to something that's given me so much over the years. I mean, it, it's helped me uh, meet new people, it's helped me you know, stay active and all that type of thing. And, I, and I, it's time for me to give back, I believe. Okay, and Jamie? Uh, my name's Jamie, uh, I want to for sports because I've been involved in sports throughout time my, my time in university. Uh, I've been heavily involved in Brampton, uh, I'm currently the Brampton Vice President uh, and I helped to start the uh, Access Brampton Sport, which is one of the first uh, Access Sport schemes. So I want, I want to promote more, especially to international students, to get them more involved uh, and more like inter-community kind of competition between Ramua, um, Englis and the city community, um, just to get like, more people involved tomorrow. Okay, cheers. Uh, don't forget, if you've got any questions for the sports officers, just tweet in with hashtag SUVote. Now, the first question that I've got is, um, reading through a lot of your manifestos and ideas, there's a lot of talk of integration, getting more people involved, especially after the Olympics, London, obviously, a great success. So I want to know exactly how are you going to get people involved into sport next year? Uh, we'll go around this way this time. Don't forget, you can all chip in if you disagree with anything. So start with you, Jamie. Yeah. Uh, well, I like to create, create like, more active sport programs. There's quite a few already. Okay. But I want to create more, especially for sports that sometimes aren't too accessible, particularly for international students who perhaps haven't played them in their home countries and they haven't got the necessary equipment. I want to kind of like make, make that equipment more accessible for them and to coach like more accessible case sports schemes, uh, particularly for like international students who have a kind of limited um, like range of sports to play back home and stuff. Okay, right. Uh, I definitely agree. I think, I think it starts kind of at the ground level. Um, uh, where the access board comes into play, where a lot of people aren't aware of a lot of things that are available to them. And I think a major part of getting people involved is to help with awareness, because there are, like I said, there are a lot of things out there, but not a lot of people know about them. So I think that's a crucial part in getting people involved. 
Okay, Jess? I think Ryan's completely right. I think it's all down to awareness. Um, there is so much available to students here at the university, but especially as a first year coming in, it's so overwhelming. You just don't, you don't know what's out there. Um, you may not have played sport previously, so I think more give it a go sessions as well um, to help people access sports and just have a go and see if they enjoy it. Okay. Um, and just awareness, really. Again, awareness is a key point, and I think sports should be able to access it at any level. The access sports games are great, you can get into those, but also we've got intramural as a um, really useful tool to get people just playing sport on a relatively casual basis. And then, of course, club sport. A lot of people feel that they once they've missed that September, here's the sports fair, here's what we've got, they feel they can't access sport later. I want to help sports teams <coughs> sort of promote themselves throughout the year. We've got this amazing varsity cup where the passion for black and gold spreads for two weeks throughout the whole university. But then for the rest of the year, it's as though <coughs> the non-sporting community at Sheffield are, aren't as engaged with what our teams are doing. So I want to promote our teams throughout the year, have a team of the week and a match of the week and just sort of spread that black and gold throughout the year and make people more aware of sport that we've got and therefore help them access it if they wish. Okay, Andrew? Yeah, I agree with everyone, what everyone <laughs> said. Uh, I'm not going to disagree because it's what everyone I, wants. I know you said about you want to sort of improve intramural yeah. and expand that. What sort of sports would you look to get involved uh, well, with Well, because I'm um, the law sports rep for, uh, yeah, for law, sorry. I've had people, I've had people, students come up to me and say, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And th those are things are like basketball, badminton, women's football, which we did offer this year, but the interest wasn't there. Maybe it wasn't publicised enough. It, maybe it wasn't, maybe sports officers weren't uh, pushing it as, an, uh, uh, as much as they should have. Um, so that's how I want to make it bigger. And the Societies League right now is, a, is at 12, 12 um, societies. Mm -hmm. um, I want to I want to extend that because there's society, big societies such as BMS aren't involved, biology aren't involved, Hispanics aren't involved. Um, there's a lot of electrical en electrical engineering not involved. It's just that um, because it's been the first year that we've done this and got everyone together, um, I feel like it's a stepping stone, and I want to help develop that even further. Um, going back to the access sport, yeah. Um, I feel that if we had monthly sort of drop-in sessions at Incliff. In, in, in so at the edge or at the ridge in the, in the um, conference rooms, just so that people can come in and see what is available, uh, maybe something that might tickle their fancy, uh, something that might be offering, and then whether it's in their budget or not, and that access sport is there. So if it's continuously uh, promoted on a regular basis, then people might be like, oh, I'll go this month and see what is there. Okay. Uh, now, I've seen a lot about people saying about linking community uh, with sport. I know, Emily, you've said a lot about this and uh, mixing charity and sport. So, if you want to talk a little bit about what you do to sort of improve links between the community and sport. I sort of, um, there's sort of two facets to the community thing. One, I think we've got so many great societies here at Sheffield and they don't, not often integrated well with sport. Um, for example, I was speaking to the Interfaith Society today and sport is such a great way to get people together. If we could take sport to a society like Interfaith, you get generating that community across the university. Also, societies like RAG, Sheffield Volunteering are such great schemes, helping get the um, mixedness between those two. We can help generate that community feel throughout the university and then out into the wider Sheffield community and show that young people here at the university have got a lot to offer. Okay. I think a lot of um, a lot of schools at moments are desperate for students Definitely. to come in and coach. I know as a club we go and coach at a mm. local school, and it's it's enjoyable for us. It helps us with what, like we're doing our coaching qualifications through this, and so it helps us and also really benefits the university, uh, like because it's such good publicity and it's just really helping people. And the city is asking for it, so I think we yeah. should be able to offer it. We've got enough students to offer it. Okay, community is key. Like without the community, there wouldn't be as much support. Like we <laughs> need that backbone. Yeah. to be able to provide sport to the people that wanted it. Okay. So we need to keep continue the work that we do within the community to show that the strength to strengthen our ties with the community. Okay. Any to add to that? Yeah, I think there's definitely what uh, Emily and just both mentioned um, with the the schools and the charity societies that already exist. Having a partnership between certain schools and certain programs like RAG and stuff like that is a great way to kind of develop more of a system between sports and the and these programs because it, it oftentimes can be you know if, if one club's specifically looking for one thing and, it, and it's not quite working out if there's that system in place already then it becomes very easy for clubs to give back and that type of thing and once you get involved in the community
then it becomes sort of a, a, a reciprocal relationship because speaking from personal experience, um, for ice hockey, we do, we do some outreach to the communities and then when we have games like Winter Varsity, where we have a lot of families come down and yeah. tell, and you know, they say to us, they had a great time, they're really enjoying it, and that's kind of the rewarding aspect of that, right. that you can achieve by giving back to the community. Okay, Jamie, anything else? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, um, I think not enough sports, um, I mean, most sports are quite guilty of this, but I don't think enough sports like fundraise, um, because it's not only a good way to like raise money for the club themselves, like buy more equipment or to put on more events, but they're also giving back to the community and like help, help in charity, um, so yeah, that's what I'd like. Okay, uh, lots of tweets coming in actually, which is pretty good to see. Uh, one here from Ollie Turner, he says, I'm rubbish at football and everyone at Intermural is far too good for me to just bother playing. What can you offer me? Which is quite a good question to be fair. This is a question that a lot of people from walking around the Union today have said. They've gone, mm -hmm. Intermural is a society base, it's not as competitive as club sport, but a lot of people that go along are fairly talented, they've played for a few years. There's a lot of people that have gone, I don't know how to play sport, I am rubbish, but I want to. Right. I think if we could just put aside one afternoon for a very, very casual, not even an intramural society cup thing, literally just go along, have a kick around, provide the location of the equipment for people to do it on their own level, however much they want to. Because there, there are people is, asking. Is that almost like a give it a go? Sort of almost badminton. like a give it a go uh, weekly uh, from various sports, I, yeah. Well, I, I know for a fact that on uh, a Wednesday afternoon, um, Access Sport do provide a community league to. Um, students such as freshers uh, to play. A um, lot of people yeah. have said yeah. though that but that's just freshers yeah. and they're asking yeah, for more. I, that's what I, yeah. Yeah. I agree that it has to be available to everyone um, and that's just the football but uh, then again it's still like intramural and it's still got that intramural vibe yeah. mm -hmm. whereas I like how you say that maybe on an off, off chance we can have like a tournament just for everyone to... Not even a tournament, tournament. Just, just, like, just, just to turn up and give it a yeah. go. Yeah. There's a lot of students who like... Down. Yeah, yeah, what if you, there's a lot of societies now who are constantly holding trials because they have so many people turn yeah. up who want to play into mirrors. So what about the people who don't get into those teams? And I know a lot of people gather a group of friends together and make a team. What if you're, like, you want to know if your friends play sport? Mm -hmm. Everybody should have the opportunity to go. If they want to play football, no matter what level they are at, we should be offering something for them, and we're not currently. It will be hard, having spoken to the staff <coughs> yeah. at Goodwin, intramural and the whole of the Goodwin pitch is completely packed out. It is going to be something that needs a lot of work and timetabling and scheduling and on the face of it looks like it might not be possible but it is definitely something that needs to be looked at and tried to consider. I think that's the thing. Right now there are, there are some things in place, like you were saying, uh, on, on Wednesdays yeah. and you know communities have a thing on Friday where it's free sport but on talking to people, those are packed. Those There's just mm -hmm. too much demand and while those things are in place for good reason, those need to be developed to kind of accommodate the, the increasing demand and that type of thing. Um, personally, uh, my friend and I, last year working as res residential mentors, we set up a community's netball team. Right. And that's been fantastic. It's been just an hour of free netball for various abilities. And, and from what we've heard, it's it's been fantastic. The, the girls have had a great time and all that, but that's kind of it. I think no, especially I mean, for girls is a really key yeah. thing. Intermural mm. is great, but the netball leagues are full. Yeah. What are they supposed to do? <clears throat> Hockey, intramural, you only have two girls per team. And then netball, I know numerous people who've gone, one set of a team of my housemates, but we can't get in the league. There's just not enough opportunities. Yeah, but at, well, what Emily was saying before is just that in terms of the facilities we have, it's yeah. just there's it is a, a problem. Log everyone will things yeah. that people yeah. want. And obviously, I think we're all in agreement that that's something that has to yeah. be looked at. Yeah. Um, no matter which one of us yeah. is in it, it's kind of something we all agree on. And it's something yeah. that we have to accept there will be a limit. You can't, we can't sit here and promise, yeah, let's get every team involved yeah. and anybody can Real, play for realistically free. Realistically speaking, right. because kind of it can't, right. but there should be something done for yeah. those that want to play on a completely casual basis. Yeah. I mean, and we're only here, needed. yeah, like we can obviously do our best, but maybe mm. it's just setting the like, just setting ground the, like, yeah, yeah, the, the groundwork ground in. It's maybe a two, three year plan, but we can set it going. Okay, okay. Uh, from that end of the scale to the other end of the scale, we've had a tweet from Alice Meller. He says, what can you offer candidates, uh, sorry, what can the candidates offer for elite performers to improve their sporting experiences aside from coaching and umpiring qualifications? Uh, Jamie, we'll start with you on this one. Um, well, for, for elite athletes, um, I mean, like I said, obviously there's already co quite a lot of coaching, um, but I believe uh, if the athletes were to coach other people, it would like, kind of help them improve their skills themselves. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, um, you said uh, improving the experiences of the elite athletes. 
Americans, correct? Yeah. Well, something that I'm very passionate about is kind of developing more of more university pride, university spirit. And like Emily said before, varsity is fantastic. Yeah. You get everyone together, <laughs> wearing the colors, screaming, mostly at home, but for the team as well. Um, and it, it's amazing. Speaking personally, went to varsity, unbelievable experience. Mm. Yeah. But that's it, you know, that mm. for for that one time in the year, that's kind of all you have. And and I know a lot of a lot of the teams around the university. I ask them, like, how many people watch your games? Yeah. Not is that possible all. though? Because varsity obviously is such a big event. Is it possible you're going to get people going to go, uh, Norton on like a Wednesday afternoon on an average week? Well, Are you really going to get that? It doesn't to be an average week. Say we've got a rugby cup final and it's yeah. happening at Norton. Why not publicise that more? Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah. Publicity. It's not out there. People just don't know that things are happening. I mean, obviously Wednesday sport or whatever, yeah. but... A lot of people aren't like, oh, well, are you going to go watch the game on, on the weekend, yeah. on, like on Wednesday? Because nobody knows they're happening. And mm -hmm. that's not just within the non-sporting community. I mean, I feel that, come varsity, every team cares about what every other team does. Yeah. For the rest mm -hmm. of the year, there's not that inter-team mm -hmm. communication. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, I tend to just have a hockey get on yesterday, you turn to each other, yeah. but that's not happening that's enough. It no. needs to be spread wider throughout, and I know... Jin is trying that same sort of manifesto. Yeah. We want that throughout yeah. the year. Yeah. yeah um, well, yesterday I was down at Norton, and um, people didn't know that the ones were playing the two uh, Hallam twos uh, in the semi cup final as well. Like it was it was quite a big game. Mm -hmm. um, the threes are playing threes as well. That's another varsity game. Why wasn't this publicised for people to get involved so yeah. they know how the teams are getting on? Um, along with this, I was I was think, um, said I would uh, try create a program, a varsity program for what teams have been doing all year so you know why you're going to watch them what they've been doing how they've been getting on um, and basically so you can you know why you're going rather yeah. than just why turning. just around varsity why not start why in not? September yeah, yeah, yeah. you can well, all get that going from September it's potentially exp expensive though and the students yeah. people want to pay for it but what about something online maybe that yeah. everyone can look through because then it's it's yeah. not using expensive because I don't know if we'd get like you'd get the funding yeah. for that well I know, I know for a fact that each like most some some clubs do have their own website but how do you, where do you, where, yeah, exactly. There needs where to be a go? central place. Yeah, but it could all be put on the yeah. union website yeah. together. So it's, it's as one easy thing. as that. It's easy yeah. as yeah. Put, so putting simple. a list of the website does their own posters pay. in the union. Sorry. It's, it's, yeah. it's not, I yeah. believe it's something that is, yeah. can be what, quicks fairly. If it's all quicks, there, <laughs> if it's all there, then exactly, why don't just put it all together? I know, um, like, Forge Press, though, sorry, yeah. it, like, they do advertise some matches, but it's not all matches. I mean... Okay, our first team may get mentioned who yeah. they're playing, but what about the fourth teams yeah. and things? They need as much support as anybody. Um, I think it's just getting I think everybody. Luke Mack's done a great job this year with this yeah. sports newsletter that goes out to club captains. Mm -hmm. That's been and it's yeah. really good. And I know everyone that is a club captain is trying to share it to their clubs. That I think could go to the wider community with yeah. an opt in system because mm -hmm. obviously we get a lot of spam junk. <laughs> you don't want another email, you don't yeah. want to read. But so. if you, people that care and want to get that weekly sport update, it's so ex easy to get out. I, I do sports editing for Forge Press, and yeah. is that something you would look at, sort of like more most communication? Because I think that would yeah, help like, for you to get your message across almost. I know the sports committee at the minute is trying to do like a, a captain of the week type thing to get a team focused, on, mainly on the build up to varsity, but next year we could try doing that throughout the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah so just even like sports uh, people, I know we had a varsity meeting on Tuesday, yes. and someone piped up and goes, I've never heard of Corfball. Well, why not? <laughs> like, it should be advertised. It's a great sport. I and agree. It, it to should this be day, I'm not 100% sure what Corfball is. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you're aware we have you're a team. We have that. I know <laughs> Corfball exists. Yeah. I just don't know enough about it. And yeah. Because, <laughs> well, exactly. You hear about football, you hear about... Hockey, rugby. Hockey, rugby. Yeah. And, and that's kind of it, you know, you don't have that wider aspect of things, which is something that I think we're all keen to, to, to expose, really. To, but to not to the else. detriment of those higher teams. No. Yep. It's a case of sort of equality across all of them. Okay. Uh, I needn't really have prepped any questions because these <laughs> tweets are flying in. Got another one here <laughs> off of Chris Wilman. He said, how do the candidates feel their past experience within Sport Sheffield benefits them in the job they are running for? Uh, Drew, uh, past experience, how can it help you? The past experience, I, I'm, uh, I've been playing on the futsal team for this is my second year. Uh, the year before I was there, we were the national champions. So I already got into a team that was a, mini, um, a winning mentality. Um, and it carried on and everyone's just keen. So that experience helped me want to build upon the success they had. Last year wasn't as successful, um, but this year is getting better and we're, we're in the last 16 uh, of the National League. Um, also working at Intramural um, mm -hmm. as a, as a part-time coordinator, it, the experience I've got from that is that 
people want to get involved uh, if, if you allow them to. Okay. So with that, I reckon every experience you do get, you learn what people want and hopefully this job will, the experience I have got will allow me to use it, um, sorry, with a sports officer role. Okay, uh, Emily? Um, I've spent the last two years on the cricket committee, this year as the club captain, last year as development. Um, so I've had a view of what one particular club, and a fairly small club that doesn't get much publicity wants. On the other hand, I've also been on sports committee this year, which means that I've seen it behind the scenes. I've worked with Kate Rickard down at Access Sport, and we've worked with Disability Sport. Um, spoken to many people at Intramural, I'm aware just how important Intramural is and how many people want to expand it, regardless of our facilities. It it is wanted and also club sport I've seen behind the scenes there we've got links with every single club we're getting feedback from them really well this year so I've seen it how it works behind the scenes and what can realistically be done okay just I've also been I've been on the hockey club committee for the past two years and this year as their club captain um we're obviously a huge club so there's a lot of people and you get a lot of feedback from that and that's just shown to me what what we need to maybe to get more books points to win as varsity yeah. is things like gym membership, subsidised, uh, Wednesday afternoons free. So I know what club sport want. But also I've been the Management Society sports set like last year. Um, so I've been highly involved in intramural and I've just seen how many people want to play and had so many people ask me, why don't we do this sport? Why don't we do that? Can we do this? And it's just highlighted to me completely what we need. Having not pay been able to access sport in my first year, mm -hmm. it's also made me aware on that level of how much more publicity we need mm -hmm. and how we need to get people more involved. Okay. Right. Well, uh, throughout the years I've been involved in a lot of teams and for the first couple of years I was really keen to get on committees and all that type of thing. But after a while I got busier and busier with my course that I kind of receded a little bit, mm -hmm. but I found over not only this year but the past year, just by being around the system for so long, people come to me and ask, you know, well, I'm, I'm kind of running parallel with the committees about how clubs are run with the Ice Hockey Club, the Sheffield Medics Basketball Club, and the Netball, Communities Netball. And you see different aspects of, of different levels of clubs, from Ice Hockey's club level, uh, communities is access board, but you know, then there's a society sports, uh, medics basketball, and you see kind of how things are run, and they're all kind of run differently, mm -hmm. but with the same goals in mind. Okay. Um, across the board, it's all about you know publicity and, and trying to really trying to get uh, get the club's names out there, and I think that sort of experience by seeing different teams at different levels sort of operating towards the same goals is is something that. Uh, that would benefit me in the future. And Jamie? Uh, well, I've been on the Bounty Committee for the last two years there, this year I'm Vice President, uh, and it's given me a real insight into like how a club's run, like how it functions, uh, how it spends its like, resources, uh, what its members want. Um, so I think I've got good, good experience in that area. And last year I helped to set, to set up the uh, Access Board Bounty Programme. Uh, it was the first year, uh, one of the first Access Board pro programmes, uh, and it was really, su uh, really successful. Okay. Uh, we had like at least 20 people who came to play each week like casually. Uh, that was because like I think they felt that they didn't want to be too committed to both the course, especially if the course is quite intensive. Mm -hmm. They prefer that just like casual basis until you one pound to play each, each week. So although <coughs> membership is good, some some people don't have the time or can't afford to. Right. Um, and I'm also the Sheffield uh, local league's plastics captain. Right. At Bampton, when a, like a local league against different teams. Uh, so I think that that's good for like if more teams can get involved with that like, against the community, like even if it's just like friendlies against other teams. I think it kind of like encourages like integration with the community and society and stuff. Okay. I agree, I play for a local club at the weekend. I think having that link between a local club in Sheffield mm. and just the sports club is so beneficial. Mm. We'd really like to help other clubs get that link. It, mm. it helps us so unbelievably much. Like, yeah. It would be great if other clubs could do for that. For any sport, for large yeah. sport yeah. and a little sport. I mean, any sport. Women's literally. cricket, as we only play other universities on a very rare basis, so we've set up our own league against local Sheffield teams. Yeah. So we've provided indoor cricket for the local area, and I think that's something that needs to be focused on. And yeah, because we, we're, all, we're all talking about the sport at the University of Sheffield, but they call it Sport Sheffield for a reason. It's yeah. the whole mm -hmm. thing. Everyone, everybody yeah. getting involved, not only with just sport, but with the communities and things like that. Okay. Uh, just to finish off, gym fees. Um, 
<laughs> obviously, as, yeah, quite you know, like touchy subjects. Obviously, a lot of people say they're a bit too expensive. Any sort of plans for them? I know Jess. Yeah, you said about in, yeah it's in my in manifesto. <laughs> um, well, club membership has been online for the first time ever this year. Right. Um. So and gym membership. So you can directly compare now online how many club members are part of the gym. Okay. And I can tell you now, having spoken to people, it's low, about 30 or 40%. Mm, right. So it's going back to Sports Shop and being like, why is it so low? Mm -hmm. We can increase performance by doing this. Um, it would also, by, say, by offering, so if you pay your subs within the first two weeks of term, you can have this subsidised gym membership. So it would be great for Sports Sheffield because they'd have more people being members of a gym. Also great for sports clubs because they'd get their subs in quickly. Which do, you, do you think the gym would allow this? or? Um, I think they would because um, there's been talks at the moment of extending parts of the gym because they are like starting to reach capacity. Okay. And when this happens, they'll they'll want more people. And if we can say we can get you say a guaranteed like not a certain number of more people, uh, for maybe a, like slightly less price, I think rather than not have those students like a part of the gym, when they take it, yeah, I really do. I think it's difficult though because at the same time the gym has to operate as a business. Yeah. 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 It has to exactly it has to be sustainable and to say that okay if you do this for us we'll do this for you. Those are projections. Those are yeah. those are kind yeah. of things that are are unknowns. And at this time we kind of have to assume that they're doing their best. But at the same time there's always that little bit of wiggle room. And there's yeah. that so, there there are ways to sort of Look around the system and kind of and kind of work on that, but I think it, it just has to start with building a relationship between the university and the gym and yeah. and, and improving things well, like that. Well, like you said, it's all sport Sheffield, mm -hmm. so yeah. we're, all, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. So why can't why can't we help each other? Exactly. Yeah, work together. Yeah. It's just like a business offering information. So mm -hmm. like we would we would work together and. Well, it would be beneficial for both parties. Like the gym wouldn't suffer because of it. Maybe the, the gym. Well. Is limited in its size. Oh, it I know, yeah. Limited size. And it's it also just it's went open to the public. A lot of, uh, yeah. 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 It's, it's so there, there is space, but I think space. there's no point sitting here going gym memberships for all club sports. Yeah. No, it's it a goal. A, it's something that could be worked on. But right, realistically, right. it will only be a small percentage. It's obviously a hot button issue, but there's there's. It has been for years. Yeah, yeah, but whether we can start with a trial, like of say we'll try it with a few clubs next year and see how it gets on, mm -hmm. and say do that as a deal with Sports Shop, and it is a long term goal. But so the groundwork needs to be put in, and it's not being put in at the moment, really. Okay. Uh, just to round up, guys, just a final closing statement: why people should vote for you for sports officer next year? I think people should vote for me because uh, I've been involved for a short time in university. Uh, I'm really passionate about access to sport, international student participation, getting more people involved in committees, and just because I, I think sport really can be beneficial to, during time at university. Uh, as, as an extra dimension, and it just makes the in the university life so much more enjoyable. Um, I think personally. Uh, in taking a look at which candidate you're going to look for, I think we'll, over the across the board, we're all basically yeah. saying the same thing. Yeah. We're all yeah. trying to improve the system. We're not trying to radically change things. Um, so in terms of why you should vote for me, I think uh, I think one of the main things to look at is is my passion. I mean, I've been here for so long. I I want to give back. It's about time. Um, and. <laughs> And I think this is a fantastic way to do it. I think I'm a very approachable person. So in terms of you know seeing the union officers as kind of these people who are unapproachable and you can't really go to them for the problems, I think that's something you know that I could kind of help with in terms of being approachable. Okay, Jess. Okay, I think like Ryan said, I'm passionate about sports. I've got a real passion for the sports at the university and just the Sheffield in general. Um, if elected, I would give 110 percent every single day for everyone. Um, I've got the experience that I could use to, to, to like help students and um, the policies which I would really try to push through um, and I would impress if they were in. And <laughs> <laughs> um, like June said, one thing with sport is it's not that controversial. Everybody does want the same goal. Yeah. I think one thing that will help me stand out is my experience on sports committee. I have seen the behind the scenes at every level. I've worked with the current sports officer on a weekly basis. I know how it all works. And when it comes to black and gold pride and sport, just it's made my uni experience. And I want to spread that throughout. Even non-sporting students can experience that pride and passion of being a student at the University of Sheffield with such a great sporting, sporting aspect. Yeah, as all the guys have said, sport is important uh, to many students at this university. It breaks up your university life and uh, 
adds enjoyment to it if you do enjoy your sports. And like you said, if you don't enjoy sports, we can make that happen. Uh, the reason why you should vote me into sports is I want to keep developing what I'm doing within the systems that I am, uh, the futsal team, small club right now, and I want to make them bigger so they can get the coaching coaching that they do and what they deserve. Because they, like I said, they were national champions two years ago, and yet we're down to a squad of 15. Uh, we, I want to get more people involved um, in a lot of smaller clubs as well to make them bigger, like the big clubs, like. Uh, like your hockey club, like the football, like the, like the rugby. Overall, access sport is the umbrella of all sports, so we need to develop that in order to get develop anything else. So getting as many people involved is what my aim is, especially especially the freshers when they come to uni when it's daunting. Um, so my aim is basically to get everything, everyone involved as, po as much as possible. Well, thanks guys. I'm going to call full time on the sports debate now. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, it will be the candidates for the women's officer role. Thank you. Yeah.